Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. It's kind of a casual Friday today, not wearing my work clothes, but behind me is a 2006 Toyota Prius. We're gonna be replacing the drive battery. That's the hybrid high voltage battery. So follow along, let's get started. First thing we wanna do is just remove everything in the trunk. Lift this up, we'll move this out of the way. And this tub here as well. Just all comes out nice and easy. Okay, right here is the battery. This is what we're getting to. We're gonna pull this completely out. First thing we wanna do before we get too crazy with it is right here, there's an orange service plug. We wanna push that up, then over and out. I'll show you that once the battery's out of the vehicle a little clearer, but we wanna pull this out so that while we're doing everything else, this has enough time to dissipate any charge. If there's any charge left over in the capacitors in the inverter or anything like that, by the time we get to the battery, it'll have dissipated and then we don't have to worry about it. So do this first. Over on the driver's side, we wanna pop this out and then there's a 10 millimeter. You might be able to just get it with your hands, but it's a little plastic nut. Maybe sometimes you could just lift on the whole thing and it'll pop up. It's just this little plastic nut here, a 10 millimeter. Okay, now we'll swing you over to the passenger side. So same thing, we have this we wanna remove and then we'll disconnect the negative battery post. 10 millimeter here. We'll take that negative battery cable and just stuff it aside so it doesn't reconnect to that battery. Now we'll go inside. So now inside, we wanna move the seats forward. So there's these push buttons on the top. Get both of them. All right. We'll go ahead and un-Velcro this. And then we'll get these two 10 millimeter bolts. So we'll put these in one of the side buckets. Now on each side, they have fasteners that you just pull on and it'll come out. Same thing to this side over here, just a fastener. And now this whole thing should be able to pop straight up. We'll get that out of the way. Now our battery is really being exposed. Next thing you wanna do on the driver's side, we're gonna pull this whole panel off here, open the driver side door. Now this side panel, to get it off, you wanna push up and then forward. So up and forward is the motion, and that's all we have to do. Doesn't have to come completely out. So right here is a 10 millimeter. We'll get it with a deep socket. And then right here is another 10 millimeter. Put that in the bucket. We also have a hold down right here, just a 10 millimeter. Now all the hold downs are the same. So these can go here or it can also go here when we took that off. So they're all the same size. Okay, so this side is almost ready to come off. We just need to pull this little strip off here. Let me show you. So this here, all we do is just pull up. Should come off pretty simple. Move that out of the way. Now, when you're pulling this off, we want to be careful on this side. There are little fasteners that hold it in, but this material is really fragile. And if you just yank on it, you'll end up ripping those fasteners away from this material here. So what you want to do is just find where the fasteners are. Like right here, you can feel it plastic, a hard plastic. So this is all kind of a soft, flimsy material. Bring your finger up till you see a hard plastic pull there. And then bring it up until another hard piece of plastic and pull there and that'll protect it. I've seen a lot of these be ripped away by just yanking on them. All right, that should be it. So this should all just be clipped in like that. Okay, and then we have this little light here. Just in the back, we can either unplug it or push it through. Sometimes you can just push it through like that and then right through the hole or unplug it from the back. Whatever's easiest for you and that's it. And this is what I mean on that side. See how it's just this flimsy material and then there's this plastic. Well, this plastic can rip away from the fabric and then it won't lock. You just have to glue it back down if that happens. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing to this side. So to remove this here, we just lift up on the bottom and then forward. That's out of the way enough. And we have our 10 mil here, 10 mil here, and then this tie down. Same thing on the corner here. Just follow it up until you feel that plastic. And then one more plastic. There we go. And it should just pop off from the wall. Nice. Now this side doesn't have a light or anything you have to worry about. Nice, we're getting closer. All right, on the back of the seat, there are four 14 millimeter bolts that need to come off. 
These are seat covers. Yours might look a little different, but here's one here. There's one right here. And then there should be one on either end as well. We wanna pull all that off and this seat will slide forward. We don't have to pull it all the way out of the vehicle, just forward enough to get access to some of these bolts behind here. So they should just slide forward under these brackets. These seat covers might get in the way just a smidge, but there. There, so that should be far enough out of the way. So what we gained access to are all these bolts behind here holding this down. So now let's start pulling off some of these brackets before we touch too much on this thing. You see it says right here, danger, high voltage. If there is some sort of acid or, or battery chemistry leak onto this, it could be charged, at least according to the manual. I've never had one do that, but because it's that possibility, what we wanna do is just take a voltmeter and double check that this does not have any kind of charge on this case. So what we wanna do is just put our voltmeter to volts DC, and then we're just gonna to touch around the box without touching the box ourselves. We should have zero, even if we touch the box or the case to the car, case to here, anywhere, we should get zero. Another thing you could do if you don't have a voltmeter, really simple, is just with a test light. You can test light to one side and just start touching the case. If the test light lights up or the light bulb gets really bright and burns out, then you know you have a problem. Again, I've never seen this happen, but it's in the manual saying that it is a possibility. Because this is high voltage, we just wanna be super careful playing around it. But now that we know it's safe to proceed, let's go ahead and start unbolting. I'll move the camera around. So we'll start with this side. They are 12 millimeter bolts. All right, I'll have to come back with a smaller wrench to get these. My gun was too big, but there's two more down here for this plate here. So let me be right back. Take that cover off, we'll set it aside. Then we have 10 millimeter bolts holding this cover off. We wanna pull that off as well. Probably sitting on this isn't the best idea. Okay, so we got this cover off here. We'll set that aside. Let me show you around. There's a couple more spots. We just wanna check for voltage real quick before we keep touching stuff. Well, now you're sitting on the battery. So we take our test light to that lead there. Then we just wanna to touch the other lead and it should be completely dead. The reason why we do that is because we need to disconnect this electrical connector here to pull these wires out of the way. But we know right now that we have zero voltage, so zero danger of getting hurt. And these are eight millimeter. Okay, now this whole orange thing can just be put out of the way. And I'm just gonna put our nuts back on so we don't lose them. So the last place we wanna check for voltage is under these caps. Now with this service plug out of the way, there should be zero voltage across these. That lets us know that the battery is completely disabled. There we go, nothing. Just in case there's something wrong with the wiring inside, if this was a flooded vehicle or something like that, and there's making contact where there shouldn't be, and this is just to double check. So we'll put these caps back on. All right, let me pull you back out of the vehicle. Now on the driver's side, we wanna go ahead and disconnect all these electrical connectors. One, two, and this big one, three. So that's out of the way. So this side is done other than the big main bolts holding it down. Let's hop over to the passenger side. So on this side, we wanna get rid of this ducting. There's little clips here that pop up. We may need a uh, little tool. Sometimes they're not on there too tight, especially if this battery's been taken off or opened up before. But there's those two clips and it should, there we go, separate like that. We have this here that just comes off. There we go. Now we can pull this off again, 12 millimeter bolts. And this should come up and out. Now back here, we have three bolts holding it down. Since we're here, we might as well get them 12 millimeter. Now on this side, there is a vent tube. You wanna disconnect it from the battery and not from the car. So just disconnect it up here from this little Y pipe. That's for the ventilation for the battery. And now we'll pull this off here. Again, there's a couple of clips possibly. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here. That will allow this one to move. This wiring harness is connected to the top of that. So we'll just pop it off. Okay, we'll move this up. There we go. And then one more electrical connector right here. That will get that off. You know what? Actually, we don't even have to. We could just set this whole thing aside. Forgot about that. We can leave that. So now our battery is free. We got two more 12 millimeter bolts up front and this thing can be moved out. 
I'll move you back a little. Get everything out of the way. All right, now this thing is pretty heavy, so you may have to walk it a little. Let me get my muscles in here. There we go. I think it weighs a little over 100 pounds. Let me get a table set up so when we pull this out, we just set it right down on the table. All right, let's lift this bad boy up. Remember to lift with your back, not your knees. All right, let's disassemble this. Now we're gonna pull this cover off right here. They're just 10 millimeter bolts. It's like three on this side. And one, two, three, four, five on the other side. So that whole case comes off. All right, that's it. So let me show you something real quick. So we'll pop these off and I'll show you some voltage readings. So just a little pick here. You can see on the top, you just pick the top, pick the top, pick the top. You'll see where it snaps in. And it should just come right off. I'm get my little test light. So how high voltage is achieved is you stack these modules, the negative, positive, negative, positive. You put them in series, you stack them. The more you stack, the more the voltage climbs. So the most voltage will be from here to here, but there's no voltage because we have that little safety pin out. So let's put that in and then I'll show you how to remove it. So we'll put this safety back in just for educational purposes. Now this battery is live at the moment. And what I mean by live is it has its full juice. If I were to put here and here, it'd probably burn my bulbs. So let me not do that. Let me get a voltmeter and show you. So negatives over here, positive is over here. So right now, this pack, can you see that? 220 volts. And that's because it's end to end, so all of them are stacked. Let me pop this off and we'll put it in the middle. Middle here, put that on. And now we're only 110 volts. That's because it's half the pack. So that's how you get the high voltage. Well, this here, I'll show you on this side, but it cuts the battery almost in half, but it prevents the complete high voltage and you get a, a lower voltage closer to, I think 100 on one side uh, and a little more on the other side. But that's how it works. So let's say just for safety, because we're, we're all learning here, right? This is a live battery. That's okay, because we know what we're doing. But let's say, so this is positive. Let me say it's like two, uh, one, two, three, the fourth one over. So we won't have as high a voltage, 31 volts. So that's perfectly safe. Anything below 50 volts is okay. Uh, you, won't, you won't really get shocked. You may feel a tingle with 31 volts, but you won't, um, won't get shocked, so to speak. So guess what I'm getting at is that you don't want to be doing, sometimes we do one thing over here and one thing over here and we kind of work towards the middle with two hands. Not the best idea because it's the stacked stack that creates the high voltage as, as uh, the further you get apart from each other. So if you just work from one end over, then uh, it's a lot safer work environment. And also to keep in mind too, let's just show you, is none of this should be connected to the case. So if I were to do that and put it on uh, this one, so positive and maybe the case is negative, uh, it's not. You see how it's just jumping around all over the place? And eventually it'll settle down to zero. But that jumping around, that uh, just means that it's not finding a voltage. That the instrument itself is just kind of trying to figure out what it's seeing. So it'll slowly keep dropping and eventually just read all zero. So that's zero volts. So the case and here should not be connected. They're completely separate. So just some, I don't know, information to help you work a little more safely. So now let me pull this back out and I'll show you how to do that real quick from another angle. All right, so this service plug, you just pull up, tip it out, and then it comes right out. That's it. To put it back in, you just plug it in, tip it up, push down. If this is just up like that, then, and you put it together and you forget to push it down, then you'll get a code in error on the dash saying, hey, we got a problem. Well, that's it. So it has to be in the down position. So we'll just pull that out, good to go. Since we're on this side, let's just go ahead and take these off. And it's the same way, we just pop these, pop right here these are the terminals for the service plug so what you're doing is you're breaking this connection so that the whole pack is no longer connected to each other because these are no longer connected by way of the service plug hopefully that makes sense but now that the service plug is off let me um let me show you what i mean so if i were to put this here 
and then put it all the way on the other end before we were getting 220 volts. Well, now the service plug is out. So let's put that there, this one here. And then you see this is millivolts. So I can change the range, Oop, put it more in the middle. There, 0, 0, 0.00 volts. So now you don't have that dangerous uh, voltage, but you still have to be somewhat cautious. So that's a negative, this is a positive. So these are all still connected though. Let me just show you that real quick, uh, just for learning. So it's 47 volts right here. So this little section is 47 volt. If we were to put it on the other side of this service plug, then we'd probably get quite a bit over there. So let's just do that for experiment purposes. Yeah, 126 volts. So that's still in the dangerous range. So this whole side, but that's just if we touch both sides at the same time. But if we're just working from one side to the other, uh, we don't have an issue. So just keep that in mind as you're working touch one thing at a time. Okay, these are eight millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and zip all of them off. If you have a drill, that's the best. You could just put a quarter inch extension in the chuck, tighten it up with your eight mil on the end. It'll make things go really quick, but also when putting things back together, we can adjust how tight it'll tighten it. And then again, that'll speed things up and we won't over tighten anything. So one off at a time. All right, so now this whole thing should just peel off. So you got this side here, and then this should be all on its own, and then you got these orange ones here. Just pop that off and out of the way, just like that. And then because we're replacing these with cylindrical cells, what we're gonna be doing is popping these off as well. Now they do sell new prismatic cells. So not used, but actually brand new prismatic cells. And if that's the case, it's really just a, a complete swap without any kind of modification. When you go from these prismatic to the cylindrical cells, you have to change uh, one of the wiring harnesses and a few minor details. But if you purchase these prismatic cells, which are a little more expensive, but that's what the manufacturer went with from the beginning. So they're probably a good option to put back in Okay, so now let's just hop over to the other side. We'll do the exact same thing to those bus bars as well. Now, once the other side is off, this side is actually uh, neutral. It's really safe. I still like to go from one side to the other just to keep my mind uh, in that process. Okay, so this side is done. Okay, now we're just gonna disconnect this as well from the main thing and then this one here in the front now this whole harness is connected at the bottom here so if you just follow it you want to disconnect it looks like it has a little connect holder pop that up I'm just gonna cut that little piece there make it easier and then we want to pull this top one out of the way just so we have room so this top connector and then we can get access to that bottom connector you get a screwdriver because my fingers aren't pinchy enough for it Push on it with a screwdriver. There we go. So that orange connector comes out. Now this whole harness is being replaced with a new harness with the new batteries. So we don't even need any of these. We're just keeping the main wires. You can pull this off. There's two 10 millimeter nuts holding these white little brackets on. We'll pull those off. There's one on this corner and then one on the opposing corner, 10 millimeter. This one I just got with the open end. Now we're gonna flip the battery over. Before we do that, we unplug this. Let me move you over a little. So we unplug this up here. We also wanna unplug it. There's one more white plug on that harness. Just gonna unplug. Let me get it with my fingers. There we go. There, so now this whole harness is free and only connected to this. So it separates it from the case and the battery pack. So now we'll flip it over. You wanna be careful with the case. There we go. Now there's eight millimeter bolts holding all this on. We'll pop all those out and then it separates the case completely from the battery pack. Super quick if you have a drill. Now if you don't have a drill, you can do this all by hand. No big deal. All right, so we'll move this. There we go. So we're gonna take these sensors off. You need a little pick, pop them out. There we go. Remove this here. And we'll 
we'll flip it back over again. I'll do the same thing here. Just pop these off, pop these off, and we'll just leave that like that, just so we can move this out of the way. What we're gonna do is pull these off. I believe they're 12 millimeter. Before we separate this completely, what we wanna do is mark it. We wanna mark the front direction and whether this side is positive or negative. So we had our computer and all that stuff over here. So that's technically uh, the front or what I'm gonna call the front. So I'll put a little arrow here, a positive. This is the positive side, negative, that's the negative side. And that's how we need to start our cells back. So positive, negative, positive, negative. Uh, we don't wanna get it reverse, negative, positive, because then when we bolt up our two main posts, we'll have reverse polarity and we can mess some things up. So now that we have everything marked, we wanna take off the back side. So if this was where all your computer stuff was, we wanna take off the opposite, so 12 millimeter. And if your car was driven recently, these cells may be a little swollen, these modules may be just a little swollen, that's normal. So if this is under a little pressure, that's okay. Just be aware of it. It's not gonna like blow off, but maybe under a little pressure. I don't know if you can see, they're starting to expand. There we go. Just kind of popped out there. Okay. I'll set this aside. So all of these we could just set aside. Now, if you purchase a whole set of the cylindrical and you have like a core charge, a lot of companies will charge a core and just set these aside in your box or whatever. That's pretty much uh, all you do with these, unless you're going to refurbish them yourself. Now, these are called modules. Sometimes you'll hear people call them a cell which we all understand what they mean, but actually these are the cells. So there's six cells that make up one module. And then there's 28 modules in this Prius that make up the battery. But in reality, this battery has 168 cells because six times 28, I believe that's 168. But either way, just some technical stuff. So everything comes out. In your kit, you should have electrical tape. What we wanna do is electrical tape each one of these bars. Find the end of it. So the new cells are numbered. This is number 10. Hold on, I thought it was a one. There we go, the new cells are numbered. Number one, this side is positive. This will go all the way in and this was our positive. So that's the beginning of our battery so just like that we'll get the rest of them and put them in now there are only 14 of these because one of these equals two of your old ones so about the same width as two and the same voltage as well so one of these so 28 of these 14 of these and you'll see too how they'll lock into each other there's dips here and protrusions here so that's how they lock in See dips, protrusions, and they just lock in place. That's all you're doing is putting them in order. All right, 13, 14. And right, now we'll go ahead and put this back on. And it may help to swing this out just a little so it's hanging over the edge. And you can get to these bottom ones a little better. Okay, now we'll try to make them even. There we go, somewhat even. When we have this in the case, they'll all line up when we bolt them into the actual battery case. Now these may be looser than the previous ones, so just be a little careful or cognizant of that. I'll turn this back around. Okay. So this goes like this. So this one with all the really long black and white, those are temperature sensors. Those go on the bottom. So this whole thing goes down below. This one goes up top. There we go. Okay, that goes through the notch like that. We'll just put this back on like that. So all this is doing is just holding the wire on. So we can space it out a little if we wanted. Good. Now we'll flip it on its side and we'll put all the bottom wires on. So this goes on the bottom. 
All right, so the first one, clips on the first. Do you see these little rings under here? That's where all of our clips go. So the first temperature sensor here, the blue one, goes right here on our first one. There we go. Then this one goes in the middle. So skip one, then the middle. Okay. And then this one goes on the last. Put that on the last one. Perfect. And then now we just have our wire holds. And those were just the, the blank ones. So those go in our little middle ones all right holds the wire and then this one here there we go just holds the wire so that's all it does it keeps the wire secure all right now we'll tip it upside down we'll go ahead and put our case back on now if this thing on the underside popped off uh no big deal just leave that there we could just put it back on once the case is on really all we're worried about Let's put that over there, that over there. Okay, so now our case should fit in those notches on our white retainer brackets. So each one of those. Okay, so now what we wanna do is get our new hardware. They gave us new bolts for these, and then we'll line up our battery to be bolted into our channel. I lied, they didn't give us hardware for that. They gave us hardware uh, for something else, but we can use the old ones anyway. So you should be able to see where the old one was. And just like before, we're gonna do every other one. And we can slide our battery uh, any way we need to, push the cells over just to make it all line up. Let me show you on this side what I'm doing. So not always do they line up so I can manipulate the battery, move it a little to get it to line up and then drop my bolt in just like that. I want to make sure we get a good couple of threads with our finger. We don't want to cross thread any of these. I'm going to put these 10 millimeter bolts back on. I think that will help line it up a little more too. I'm just putting this nut back on here. There we go. That helped line it up a little better on this first one here. Okay, so now with our drill, we'll put it on the lowest setting. So number one on here and you just torque them down and it'll stop when it's tight without over tightening and stripping these out. So I find that it puts it at a really good torque. These aren't really too tight. I forget what they are, like seven or eight foot pounds or maybe even less. Okay, so our case and our battery are connected to each other. It'll be really heavy flipping it. There we go. Put this back in place here. Goes right there. Now we'll leave these unplugged for now because we have a new harness that goes here. All right, now it's time to put the bus bars on. Do that one. And it should come with all this hardware. Now we're only touching one thing at a time. Now we can also put the harness back on as well. So you have a red and a blue. So this is a two piece harness here. So one will go to one side of the battery. One will go to this side of the battery. The red goes to the top post, the blue goes to the bottom post. Now the top post, we just want the negative. So not both positive and negative, but just the negative on the red. So the first one goes to V1. So we're gonna put this down, then this, just like that. And then we'll just bolt that together, just like that. Now on the other side, you should have a V2. Now that V2 will go to this same one, but on the bottom. All right, now here's a three. So we'll put the bus bar on right here. Now the red only goes to the negative. So that's all the red needs. So we're not gonna put one on this one, but the negative here. So every other one, let me get another bolt. There we go. So that'll go on like that. Cause all these are for is monitoring the voltage of each one. So you need one on one side, one on the other, one on one side, one on the other. And we'll just get more bus bars and just do that all the way down. I'm gonna skip. Remember when we're doing this, we're building up the voltage of the battery because now we're stacking them. So what we don't want to do is touch something down here and then touch something down here once it's all put together. So if we just, just like when we were taking it all apart, just do one at a time, you won't have to worry. All right, we'll leave this slot alone for now. Let's hop over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now I don't have these tightened down quite yet, but that's okay. Let's hop over, lay those in, and then we'll tighten it all back down later. 
All right, so this side we're doing the exact same thing. We'll get our plates. Just gonna lay them out here. Okay, starting back here. Now this will be positive, where the other side we did negative with our wires. We're gonna do positive with our wires this time. Now we're gonna skip this one because that's where our, our service plug goes in these right here. So we'll skip that one and just put one over. And then our wire, all right. And we'll put this on like that. So it'll just have to run wild like that. And then this one will connect to the other one along with our little voltage meter. Okay, here we go. This can all lay down. So what we need to do is just tighten all these down. Once we have this kind of laid in its spot, these kind of go in their spot. We'll go ahead, and tighten all these down. We'll put the caps on them, go to the other side, do the same thing. And we still have to install this on the other side in the front. All right, now we have our caps. Now the two biggest caps go on the two front here. And they have the little clips on the side that go in these slots. I'm gonna do that a little different. There we go. And the other big one goes on the other side. There we go. Now honestly, this service plug connections, they were a little challenging to get on. You know, this can just go in here. We'll put these on. So just keep that in mind. Just wiggle with it until you get it in a, in a good spot. I had to bundle it up kind of over here a little more than what was uh, all, you know, from factory. We'll make sure all our wires are tucked away. All right, this side is buttoned up. We'll go ahead to the other side. We still have this to put on the front. That's the positive cable. And then we'll tighten everything down and put our caps on the other side. So we're only doing this part if your connector here does not make it to its positive here. It's kind of like almost there, but not quite. So we pull that service plug off or that little protector. And we have an eight millimeter. Pull that off, so put that on. There we go, bolt it back down. Same torque as everything else. All right, now we'll bolt it up here and tighten all this down. So these can get tucked up here. We'll tighten these. Now our big cable goes in these, this channel here. All right, we can start putting these on. Now the long single one goes on this end and another long single one goes on the opposite end. Tuck all this up. All right, everything looks good. Now just for our last one. Let's see, I lost a bolt. There we go. Gotta kind of finesse that cable. There we go. The last one. Perfect, beautiful. We'll put our cover back on the front there, our little plastic white cover. All right, now our case is ready to get put on and slap back in the vehicle. Don't forget these if they fell off to put them back. It's just extra protection. There we go. So now I'm putting the case back on. Just wanna be mindful of our wires. Make sure everything fits just perfectly. Now, if anything got bent when you were flipping it over, like some of these ears or whatever got bent, just go ahead and bend it back. It's a malleable piece of metal. So no worries there. We'll bolt those down 10 millimeter. All right, easy peasy. Now, before installing it, what I wanna do is put in our service plug and push it down so that everything's live so I can see if we have any issues with the battery before putting it in. And then right here, these plastic caps, I'm gonna measure voltage right there as well and make sure that we have our 217, 220 plus volts coming right out of here. So let's do that real quick. All right, service plug. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna undo it real quick. Take these caps off one at a time. Let's get our voltage. Let's 
So positive, negative, right there, right there. Turn this on. So with the service plug out, go to range. Here we go. If you can see that, zero volts. Put the service plug in, change my range. There we go. You see that 240 volts or 224, I mean, volts. So our battery is operating like it should. Pull that out. Our service plug is taking away voltage like it should. So now we're ready to install this back in the vehicle. I'll leave this out. Put these caps back on. All right, let's get this bad boy in. Oh my God. And just lining it up with the holes. There we go. We'll start bolting it back down. All right, if you put everything in just one box like I did, the 12 millimeters are pretty much all the same. We just pop those in their slots. The 14 millimeters are for the seats. And you can tell where the 10 millimeters go as well. All right, this tube over here, it no longer has a battery vent. These cylindrical batteries don't use a vent like the old style do. So we just leave that alone. Now that this is locked in, go ahead and put in our electrical connectors here. High voltage lines go on. I'm gonna use the drill for that as well. Put a little metal piece back on over the top and grab the cover. Now let's plug in our electrical connectors here. Okay, put our cover on. Two 10 mil nuts, and just the 10 millimeter bolts go in. There's a slot here for a 12 millimeter. Hold off on that, that goes on the bigger case. All gets locked in together. And these are just the 12 millimeter. And it's really easy, you're just looking for the holes. There they go. All right, this side is done. Let's hop over to the other side. Now this side will get the ducting. This goes down like this. So that's it for that one. Now this one is missing a 10 millimeter bolt here. So if you have that 10 millimeter bolt, go ahead, put it in. There's a 10 millimeter here. Before we put our top duct on and close all this off, we're gonna pull off our cooling fan. It's a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and it should slide out. Let me show you how to do that. I have a 10 mil here. 10 mil up here. I believe there's one more 10 mil behind this duct. There's a little clip here. You just push in and that clip separates. Let me show you what it looks like. Just a little clip like this, that center, you just push it in. There's another one up here. There we go. Take the duct off. And then there's one more bolt right here. The whole thing slides out. You take this electrical connector off like that. We'll unplug it from the back. Now there is one more little clip right here that can come off. That'll get this duct completely separated. And you could do that even before. So three clips all together for that duct. And then electrical connector in the back here. Now that we got the fan out, we can separate the fan case. Now you can clean it two different ways. You can leave the case all together and just come in through here and try to get it like with a screwdriver the best you can and suck it out or blow it out. Or you could take the case half apart. It's these Phillips screws and you just pop them off and separate the case and you get better view or better access to the squirrel cage inside. So that's what I'm gonna do is just pop the case apart and clean it out really good. All right, so that's about as clean as I can get it. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm gonna pop the other case back on it. We'll install it and then finish up with the battery. All right, I'll put this back on, plug it in first. Put the connector back here, three nuts. Put the duct back on, there we go. Now the clips, the center is pushed in, so you just push this back down, and then you see how the center popped up. So that's how we want to install it. The center popped up. And then when it's in, we push that center flush. You'll hear it click, and that locks it in. Do that to these here. Before that top duct goes in, we put this on. Again, that's the 12 millimeter. Now our duct. We got these clips that can go in wherever I put them. All right, that's it. Let's put our seat back on. Slide it under these brackets. And those are the 14 millimeter. Now lift up on your seat and line it up. There we go. All right. 
hop over to the other side. Now we have our side panels to put in. Do the driver's side first. Now our seat belt just goes in that little slot. And for the most part, it should just slide right in and snap in. And then we just have those two bolts. There we go. Make these snap in. Okay, we forgot our light, but that's okay. If you can get a hold of the electrical connector, you can grab it. You just slide it back through like that and then lock it in place. Yep, there we go. All right, then we had a 10 millimeter here and then a 10 millimeter right here. Gentle on this one because it's just a screw going into plastic, so you don't want to strip it out. And then we have this tie down here. That can go on. Now it's keyed. It has a little key. It goes in its hole. That's it for this side. Let's do the other side. So the exact same thing. The seat belt. Okay. Snap, snap. Now just a tip for keeping things clean is that you can wash your hands before putting all this on just so you don't get any uh, dirt or grease or whatever that may be on your hands on the fabric. But that's it here. So same thing, 10 mil, 10 mil, tie down. So here in the front, we can lift up on this piece and just pop it back in place. There we go and push down. There we go, that locks it. We'll do that to the other side. Let me move you real quick. Now we can put this back on. And it should snap in a couple of places. Then we have those two tie downs. All right, put the Velcro on. And then we have these two clips or pins on the side. So now our seats can get put up. All right, make sure our seat belts work. Seat belts work. Middle one works. Put our side box in. Now this 10 millimeter retainer, uh, you just push it down. You don't have to screw it down, just push it on. Locks it in. All right, put this on. Put our battery negative back on. And now we can put this side on. Now this right here goes into the carpet or into the uh, side panel here. So it's easier if you slide that in kind of first and then put it on. There we go. Don't want to forget this trim here. Just snaps in. Put our box on. Put our lid on. And then our cover. All right, that's it. Clear codes if you had a battery code. Take it for a test drive. Make sure everything's good. All right, there you go. How to replace a battery with aftermarket cells on a Gen 2 Prius. That's 2004 to 2008 are all the same. In fact, 2004 to 2015 utilize the same cells. So even though the battery may be just a smidge different, its location may be a smidge different, the actual replacement of the cells themselves should be very similar to this process here. And just keep in mind, this is high voltage, so there is uh, inherent danger of working on these things, but typically uh, they're relatively safe. So as long as you just take a few precautions, uh, look before you leap, just with a voltmeter in a couple places, can uh, reassure you that everything is okay and go ahead and proceed. I'll have a link in the description down below where I got these. You can purchase them online uh, as do-it-yourself kits. Uh, they also do mobile installations depending on where you live uh, in the United States. So be sure to check uh, that out if you're interested. And that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.